Polish member of the European Parliament, acknowledged expert in the field of regional policy. How do you see the principle, principle of solidarity in contemporary European regional politics? No, solidarity is a very broad notion and, uh, <clears throat> and of course this is, um, this is about uh, one of the important values of Europe. I mean, if we think uh, seriously about the solidarity, means that um, we are ready to be together for good and bad times. And it means that uh, uh, if uh, some of us is in the uh, worst position, so the others will take all these charges and will help him. Uh, no matter if he is from the new member states or the old member states, I mean, to be uh, 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 to work uh, according to this value means that uh, we will carry the uh, the charges of the others. It means that uh, for a while, I hope not for a long time, we are in a worse position from the uh, Central East Europe. So according to this principle. Uh, these who uh, uh, have the better position, or they are richer, uh, they, they of course they share our problems and they are helping us. But also, uh, it's, it, it, they are their own profits. It's always with solidarity. I mean, to, um, uh, sharing with someone uh, the, uh, the good and bad times means not only the pay, but also to have profit. First, to to have this kind of um, uh, reciprocity. I mean, the, someone who is helped, one day will help also. So this is uh, not uh, just completely non-profit. The other element is, according to regional policy, I mean, solidarity in such a case means also the investment. So these who are uh, better uh, in terms of economy are helping the poorer, but in fact they invest and they have their profits. So this is very, very profitable for them, for the long term. So solidarity is an important value, and this is um, uh, uh, how to organize uh, being together. And uh, what's especially important now, during the crisis, uh, to, to not to forget that uh, we are in the European Union for good and for bad times. But um, as far as concerns money, uh, solidarity means uh, not charity, but means also investment. Regional policy has an enormous potential with regard to European integration. While narrowing the economic gap between European regions, it also brings people of these regions closer to each other. Solidarity, subsidiarity, transnational cooperation, cross-border cooperation are key words of regional policy, key words that are rooted in the founding values of the European Union. How do you see these values now in Europe? Are they strong enough to lead the European integration process? I think they are, because they are uh, not only the uh, values in terms of declaration, but in practice. Uh, first, when we discuss the problem of, um, of the investment, it means that um, it's not only to give someone the money because he is in a worse situation, but of course first to uh, ask him where are the obstacles for your growth. I mean, uh, what to do to uh, reduce this kind of obstacles? It means that uh, in one case it can be a road. We will lack in the, uh, the road. In another case, is a railway. In another case, is a bridge. But uh, in the different um, parts of Europe, maybe it's a lack of human capital. I mean, the education. So, in fact, it's how to reinforce the growth, the economic mechanism, uh, while uh, uh, targeting the action. I mean, not giving someone the money and say you can spend it because you are poor, but. Uh, what you should do uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to make your growth quicker, faster, etc. So this is the first element, very, very important, because very often we think that this is just money to spend. No, no, it's, it's not money to spend. It's the money to, uh, to invest, to reinforce competitiveness and growth. Secondly, uh, according to subsidiarity, subsidiarity, which is a very old notion coming from the social teaching of the church, uh, uh, which in case of, uh, uh, of church was uh, only uh, connected to the uh, pers person and to family. But in terms of uh, public <coughs> affairs, uh, subsidiarity means 
that in a concrete situation we should very clearly define who is responsible for what. What is the responsibility of the municipality? <clears throat> what is the responsibility of the region? What is the responsibility of the union or the state? <clears throat> and uh, once we define it, we should uh, uh, give the tasks to each level. I would like to, to, to reinforce that this is not defined forever. So in one situation, this is the responsibility of the state, but maybe tomorrow it's the responsibility of the union. Maybe today is the responsibility of the municipality, but maybe tomorrow it will be responsible of the region. This is flexible. I mean, subsidiarity is nothing which is fixed, except of the family. This is, uh, uh, this is natural. The rest is just the agreement, what we call the social uh, contract. Uh, so, but uh, we should be very careful in the European Union. Where is the responsibility today? Where are the competence? not to charge someone with something which is not his responsibility and not to overcharge European Union of course but uh, so that's why when we discuss the regional policy the question is who is responsible for creating good links at the borders is the responsibility of the Union or is the responsibility of local authorities I think this is very interesting subject because this is what we call citizen diplomacy yet very often the creating the <coughs> direct links between the people on the local level is much more efficient than creating the links between the governments or even the union. So that's why the old tradition of the transborder cooperation or transfrontier cooperation between Germany and France, which used to be in, in war against each other, the, uh, the old tradition of transborder cooperation was to create the direct links between the people, to make them meet and to understand each other, to visit themselves, to live with with the other in their houses, very, very informal, based on the um, culture, education, um, uh, uh, very traditional uh, twinning. Uh, later, it was changed. And today, when we observe the transborder cooperation, it's not only about culture, and not only knowing each other, but also exchange of experience, know-how transfer. Uh, this is much more about the uh, new, new elements of uh, competences, still very important. Because the uh, transborder cooperation is in fact building bridges, building bridges among, among the people, among the, the groups, societies, etc. And the European Union knows that it is very efficient. So that's why European money can be transferred to the local authorities to organize the transborder cooperation. Because for the long term, this kind of creating the bridge of trust between the people is absolutely good investment. You are a member of the European Parliament from Poland, a country that was behind the Iron Curtain 20 some years ago on the eastern side of the Iron Curtain. Probably you have some feelings, you have some experience with regard to freedom of movement. How do you see contemporary borders within the European Union now? This is um, a lot of misunderstanding, especially in the Schengen sphere. The people they started to think that we will have no borders in Europe because of Schengen, which is not true. We have borders and we will have borders, which is very important for the member states uh, uh, because the, uh, uh, we are not the one big state. We are states which are united. So each state uh, is, uh, is, of course, uh, uh, have this kind of safeguard that the, 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 the border will be kept. The only uh, reason for this kind of misunderstanding is that we have no border, con border control. So we have no soldiers at the border, we have no s custom officers. So the border exists, we cannot see them, but they are. Or very often when we organize the football uh, championship, for example, the soldiers are back and the custom officers to control, because the uh, living w without the control is not easy. Living without control means that this is a very positive movement of the people, but very often quite negative elements, movement of the non-well-seen uh, people as well. So, so that, that's why we have the external borders of European Union, which will protect, and we have the customs, and we have taxes, etc. And we, we have the internal borders in European Union, but the, we, we don't have the budget, we have done border control. That's why we have the transborder cooperation inside European Union. Because we, we have the border, trans-border cooperation between, for example, uh, Hungary and Slovakia, for example, Poland and Czech Republic. 
transborder means that we have border, and we have to organize the transborder cooperation because very often the uh, the problems of difference of mentality, the problem of minorities, is something which exists with the, with the control or without the control. But this exists as a historical fact. And will exist for for a long, long time. So that's why I think we we shouldn't uh, forget that the problem is how to overpass the uh, the stereotypes, the problem between the nations, between the minorities. How to create the bridges, even if we don't see the control. Robert Schuman, one of the founding fathers of the European Union, said that Christianity is very much linked to democracy. Actually, he said that European democracy will be Christian or it won't exist. How do you see Christianity in contemporary Europe when seemingly secularism is the ruling ideology? What you mentioned, the, uh, in effect, thinking about the integration uh, was uh, directly linked to the uh, way of seeing the others. I mean, uh, if we don't see the others like the uh, important uh, partners with us, we are not ready to integrate. Uh, so that's why the Christian thinking was the base for this uh, integration. You can even say that without the Christian thinking, it wouldn't be the, the European integration at all, because this was the different attitude, the attitude to, uh, to be very open, to forget, for example, or to, um, to see uh, the dignity of the others, and so this is the base for the for the integration. I don't think it disappeared. Uh, it disappeared in in the texts of the European Union. It disappeared in the uh, political speeches. It disappeared in the um, uh, programs. But in fact, the uh, it's it's very deep in the uh, European thinking, and we can uh, we can accept it or not. Very often, the political uh, actors they don't accept it. Uh, but we, as Christian Democrats, we think this is true. And so they, they, they can uh, confirm it or not, but this is true. I mean, the, the whole structure is in fact based on the Christian, uh, uh, Christian values. Today is not very easy, because the, like, like uh, around the world, we, we are facing the completely new situation. We, have the, we are facing the uh, secularism as the growing movement, um, and, uh, and of course, not only secularism, uh, but also the anti-Christianity or Christianophobia or something uh, around the world. Uh, uh, we, are, we, we can see the uh, persecution of Christians around the world. And we, have, we can see the, uh, uh, the example of discrimination of the Christian inside the European Union. Of course, so this is not a very easy time for Christians in general and for Christian uh, politicians uh, also. But I think that we, we uh, nobody promised us that it would be easy. And we are not uh, uh, changing our views just because of the political situation. No, we, we, are, we have our, uh, I mean, we means the politicians with the Christian background. Uh, we are in the po politics because the, uh, for us, <coughs> politics means service service to the others, service to the uh, common good. And if it's a service, it means that one day is easier, the other day is more difficult. Uh, we are sure that what we are doing is correct and is going along the think thinking of, uh, of the uh, fathers of, um, of Europe. Uh, I don't think that we will have the Christian uh, polit politics in Europe in general. But we don't accept it, ex expect it. We, we think that this, our role should be very clear and very transparent. We should present this kind of view. If the others join us in thinking about the human dignity, about the, uh, making the po uh, politics very honest activity, okay, maybe they are not Christians, but if they go along with us to the good, you know, why not? We, we shouldn't be um, uh, the, the politicians who are, uh, who are very strict in, uh, in, uh, in dividing the people who are our people and they are. No, I think the, the most important is the, the common good and the, uh, the, the Christian values. And I think we, we, we will not repeat it all the time, but we will go along with it. On behalf of the young people participating in the Students Without Boundaries program, I thank you for your time and I thank you for your message. Okay, thank you.